Hello boys and girls, um, my name is Rosia and I am going to read my personal statement today. I applied for medicine about two years ago and I got into Imperial, UCL, King's College London and Cambridge with this personal statement. So I'll be reading it and also giving some like thoughts about where my thought processes were whilst writing it so that hopefully it can help you guys and this video is sponsored by Medify. So they're giving me the opportunity to give one of you guys free access to their personal statement course and then another one to free access to the VMAT course and then someone else free access to the interview course so do keep on watching and comment and like on this video for a chance to be able to win one of those I'll be picking someone at random my first paragraph of my personal statement was pretty long for a personal statement it took up about 10 lines 11 lines in the UCAS personal statement box um, but I wanted to make the first paragraph really personal and like, you know, grab the heart of the reader. Excellence in the practice of medicine involves the integrity of science amalgamated with the art of kindness. This has become increasingly apparent to me throughout my personal journey, starting with seeing the suffering of family members caused by dementia and OCD. This piqued my interest in the human brain and led me to read articles and online information on SSRIs and the genetics of OCD. It also broadened my perspectives on the limitations of drugs. The fact that my father was cured from the debilitating effects of OCD without the use of drugs due to concern of adverse health effects on his future children illustrates the significance of holistic care where a doctor's personality arguably plays as crucial a role as medical knowledge. From being a patient myself, I also appreciate that the best doctors offer human touches of love, compassion and optimism. My desire to emulate these traits and learn cutting-edge medical science as a future doctor has never been stronger. So that is the first paragraph. What I can say is that at Cambridge at least does read your personal statement so on one of my interview notes he asked me some questions about neurotransmitters and acetylcholine esterase which you know is literally the concept of SSRIs and how they work and I didn't know the answer so that didn't like, come across as very well because I mentioned that I read articles and online information about OCD and SSRIs so I should be able to back that up in my interviews. So make sure everything that you do write in your personal statement, you're really prepared to back up with the relevant scientific and personal knowledge. I think I also centered my personal statement on me being interested in neurobiology and neuroscience because that is something that's always just fascinated me. I don't know much about it because I haven't even started studying that because it's a second year Cambridge medical topic. But I think having a broad theme, like a direction of somewhere where you want to go, it like gives off a good impression because it's saying like this girl kind of knows what she wants even though she's not like, you know, I'm definitely going to do this. It has a theme so they can it can help me stand out as this girl is a girl who likes neurology. The second paragraph goes from lines 12 to 21. Reading books by Paul Kalanithi, Oliver Sacks, Siddhartha Mukherjee and Atul Gawande introduced me to the stark realities and mesmerising science of medicine. I saw this at first hand during work experience at the Royal Brompton Hospital where I witnessed the exhaustion and emotional resilience inherent in practising medicine. Assisting nurses gave me the opportunity to befriend patients and hear their stories. Even amidst the unpredictability of cancer, the uniqueness of the doctor-patient relationship shone through. The professionalism shown by doctors such as during a complex operation involving acute blood loss, was inspiring. However, although the multidisciplinary team was defined by collaboration, doctors are still imperfect. I therefore read, When Doctors Don't Listen, which challenged my previous thoughts on diagnostic processes. 
So there's a lot in this paragraph because I talk about books that I've read which is kind of the general vibe so I list authors rather than individual books and I also talk about a specific book which not many people might have known about so this one's called When Doctors Don't Listen and I think I found this book through just like reading lots of online articles about medicine and finding authors that have written more like niche books and books which people don't know as much about so I'm really glad I read that book because it was very clinical and it gave me something to talk about which other unis might like because they're thinking this girl has thought about that actually being a doctor means that people you're still imperfect and you're trying to be a detective working out some things and you won't get everything right so actually like reading books to find out what a career in medicine would be like realistically I also talk about my work experience at the Royal Brompton Hospital so I did a week there I also want to make a video about how to make the most of your work experience so do subscribe for that and it was a very eye-opening experience I pointed out a specific event that I witnessed, so a complex operation involving acute blood loss which demonstrates that I was taking note of like the operations I watched and the things I did and I also talked about how I assisted nurses and had the opportunity to befriend patients. So the doctor which I was shadowing gave me Thursday to help out the nurses instead of just, you know, watching him do things and that was really insightful because like I helped him change bed sheets, monitor blood oxygen and just had time to chill with the patients and talk about their lives and I realised that I do love patient interaction. So I also used lots of keywords like multidisciplinary keywords like multidisciplinary team and doctor-patient relationship. These words are very important to let the interviewers know that you understand what it means to be a doctor because it is all about teamwork. It is for most specialties about how you treat your patients and how much love you show them because then can't robots just prescribe drugs? Actually medicine is as much of an art as it is a science and if not more actually so I'm glad I use those words because they are keywords which they will be looking for as they go through your personal statement the next paragraph that I wrote was from lines 22 to 29 I witnessed the ubiquity of neurological disorders among the elderly while visiting care homes to perform music this inspired my EPQ in which I explored the role of music interventions in the reduction of agitation in patients with dementia, for which ageing is a compounding factor. Nessa Carey's The Epigenetics Revolution and Nick Lane's Oxygen introduced me to the ideas of oxidative stress and epigenetic markers, and I found their links with the mechanisms of ageing fascinating. In turn, this led me to give a presentation entitled Aging, colon, a thing of the past, question mark, which further expanded my knowledge on the ethical issues of elongating human lifespans. I like this paragraph because it, I think it really appeals to Oxbridge admissions because it shows like, okay, first, I went to care homes to perform music which used the skills that I have to make a positive impact. But I, that didn't just stop there. I was thinking about questions as I was doing that. So that led to me doing my EPQ, which was about exploring the role of music interventions in the reduction of agitation in patients with dementia. Um, I actually got full marks for the EPQ and hopefully I'll make a video one day about my tips for it, but generally just write a lot for your planning and process behind your EPQ. And then it didn't just stop there. That led me to think about aging, 
which involves oxidative stress and epigenetic markers. And that doesn't stop there, I also use knowledge from books that I read, including The Epigenetics Revolution and Nick Lane's Oxygen, to also supplement it. I don't know what's going on with my hair. That's quite cute. Um, and during the summer holidays before my uni applications, I actually read Nick Lane's Oxygen via audiobook. And I'd really recommend that because your, I, for example, I was just going on runs and I didn't need to fully digest every word, but I, it wasn't lying to say that I read it. And I really enjoyed the latter half of Nick Lane's Ox Oxygen as it does really go into the biochemical basis of like human life and things like that, which I would recommend if you're applying to natural sciences or medicine, but it's not like I remembered much of it, but if I were to tell you to include those kind of books in your personal statement, I'd also recommend you to research, just think about one or two facts that you want to remember from those books which have personally stood out the most to you, so that you remember them for the interview just in case they ask you specifically about those books. Also, I talked about a presentation which I gave which shows that not only can I write essays like for my EPQ but I also enjoy presenting and I was actually the president of my school's biomedical society. So the next paragraph four is lines 30 to 36 is the next paragraph. Seeking to enhance my teamwork skills and willingness to serve, I spent four weeks at English camps leading international students. Despite language barriers and sometimes difficult behaviours, I formed relationships with a variety of people. I also learnt to think independently through two Christmases volunteering as a children's teacher, particularly when trying to aid understanding by adjusting my communication style to each child. My resilience was tested and ultimately strengthened through working with an autistic child who might help to better understand the world around him by using drawing to enhance our communication. I really like this paragraph because it set out for at the start what I learned from the following experiences that I will detail in the next paragraph. So I said, seeking to enhance my teamwork skills and willingness to serve. So as you remember before, I mentioned multidisciplinary team, so I linked it back to my work experience, how I saw the teamwork. And then I took action to be able to experience teamwork and discover what it means for me and to improve how I work in a team. And I think that's really important for a personal statement, like making it flowy. So things at the start link to things in the middle, which link to things at the end, both within each paragraph and within the whole personal statement. And yours can be different to mine in how you link it, but I think the best way to do it is to think of something which you've seen in maybe volunteering or work experience or something you've read or something you've researched and then think about what action you took to implement what you saw to be able to discover more or to improve something within yourself which is related to the course which you're applying for. And I talked about volunteering at a Christian children's camp and just talked about basically me liking to form relationships with other people. And that's really the essence of the art of medicine is to be able to put yourselves in other people's shoes and to adjust your communication needs to different people. For example, my work experience, I saw that the consultant always asked the patients before surgery do you know what a deep vein thrombosis is? Something along those lines. And he always asked with such patience, so he didn't assume that the patients knew what it was, but he also didn't condescend them by asking them just in case they knew already. So the next paragraph, the fifth one, is from lines 37 to 42. As a delegate at Yale Centre Beijing's Conference for Young Global Scholars, Actively debating the most pressing issues of today confirm my conviction to shape the future of our world for the better, armed with the universalizing force of medicine. I have subsequently been invited to become an ambassador for the program. Recent events have shown the value of global cooperation and I hope my diverse cultural experiences 
will allow me to empathise with people of all backgrounds. I like this paragraph because I hope it kind of made me stand out in the sense that I have a lot of international experiences. Also as a third culture child, I went to China a lot during the summer. So I wanted to leverage that to my advantage by bringing in other international experiences that I have because that can all relate back to medicine and how it is really a universalizing force for good because you have doctors everywhere, healthcare needs are universal across all people and they're so important to everyone. And I mentioned lots of things that I've done before such as Young Global Scholars which I'd really recommend you applying for and also things that I enjoy doing like debating and being an ambassador. It shows that it's really important to take initiative and action yourselves and really show that through linking things that you've done and then consequences of what you've learned through your own projects and presentations and research. Then my next sentence paragraph, sorry, is the last one. So it's the conclusion and that's lines 43 to 47, which says, captaining teams and representing my county in badminton has constantly pushed me in the face of adversities and while I continue to relish every academic, interpersonal, musical and sporting challenge I more eagerly await the start of a long journey of formal learning of studying for a medical degree. It is a journey that I shall embrace with my whole heart and mind so my teacher said that was very Hollywood-esque finishing, which I agree with, but that's kind of is my personality. Like I like to romanticize things and studying medicine is to be romanticized. I mean, if you're gonna suffer for it, for it you might as well romanticize it. Please don't be too stressed by writing a personal statement. Just think about everything that you've done related to the course that you're applying for and you still have time to read chapters of books and pick out little bits here and there which you want to include in your personal statement. Also research articles could be a shout if you're in Oxbridge or a more academic university's medical applicant and don't stress about fitting in too many things because the things that you can't fit in you can ask your school teachers to put in your reference instead which also shows the Oxbridge admissions tutor kind of what a well-rounded passionate person you are because they want someone who's teachable someone who takes initiative in their own learning and someone who is actually passionate and eager to study a subject which they love so much so I wish you the best of luck in your application and let me know if you have any specific questions that you want me to answer in the YouTube comments is the fastest way to reach me probably and please do comment if you want to win the personal statement BMAT or interview course and see you soon.